I'm trying to figure out how to use the CNC machine. The basics are pretty simple, but I'm trying to learn how to create 3D relief cuts, and that seems to be a bit more challenging. Cutting out simple shapes like these coasters is not all that difficult to manage, but that's done with a single bit, and I managed to figure that out pretty quick. But the 3D relief uses multiple different bits and tool paths. I'm new to CNC carving, so I'll have to start from scratch. But before any of that, I need some wood to use for this project. And what better to use than the boards that I've reclaimed from the barn. These boards are in pretty rough shape. They've been in the barn for 45 years and were not treated well by the many horses that have been in this barn. So I have some work to do to get them ready for the CNC machine. Before I do anything to these boards, I have to make sure there are no nails left in them. I pulled most of the nails out when I originally removed them from the barn, but sometimes the nails hide. So I have to find them all or I'll end up damaging some of my tools. So I'm going to make this very complex and intricate nail finding tool. This is a magnet hot glued to a stick. But the stick is wiggly, so I can do this. This should locate any nails in the board so I can pull them before cleaning up the lumber. My first step is to trim off the tongue and the grooves. And now that I have a board with more or less square sides, I can run it through the planer to remove the hoof prints and bite marks and any other damage. Once that's done, then I can just trim off the ends before resawing it on the bandsaw. With my lumber all cleaned up, I'm ready to get started with the CNC portion. I want to try to carve this eagle into the board. And to do that, I'm going to need to clear away a lot of the excess wood. For that job, I chose a 3mm flat end mill bit. This does the job, but it's not very sharp, and it takes a long time to clear out all that wood. I think this job was about 8 or 9 hours. That's just too long for this job. The holes for the crib board are also 3mm, so I thought I would use the same bit to drill the holes. It's not really the intended use for the bit, but it was the right size, and I don't really have a proper drilling bit. This was definitely not the right bit for the job. It took more pressure than it should to make the holes, and I could see it slightly flexing the work surface every time it drilled a new hole, and it also got a little bit smoky. I'll have to find myself a proper drill bit for the next one. To do the fine detailed work on the eagle, I use a very small 0.75 millimeter flat end mill. I later learned that this is not really the right bit for the job either, but it did a decent job cutting out the fine details. But on the next one, I'll use the right bit. This one left a little bit of a rigid pattern along its path, and I want it to look a little better than that. After the eagle was all carved out, I just needed to trim off the ends on the crosscut slit. Well, that didn't turn out too bad, and I learned a lot from this first attempt. For the next one though, I wanted to go back into the CAD program and change the design a little bit and set up better tool paths. For this next attempt, I picked up a few new bits, and hopefully that'll improve the end result. I'll add some links for the bits in the comments below. To start off, I'm going to use a 6mm flat end mill to do the rough clearing pass. And on this new design, I'm setting the eagle into an oval. I thought the last one looked a little funny with the eagle sitting above the board. Clearing away all that excess wood took much less time than it did with the other bit. Not only is this a larger bit, but it's a better bit that cuts at a faster rate. Instead of using a flat end mill for the details, I'm going to use a ball end mill for this one. It's just the standard one that's included with the Snapmaker, and it does a much better job than the other one did. In my 
new design, the oval has tapered sides. And I was not really sure what the best bit to use for this part would be. I did end up using that same 0.75mm flat end and just reduced the step over rate in the tool path. This seems to work pretty well, but I think I could maybe achieve the same thing with a ball end mill as well. This one looks much better than the first attempt, and the new bits seem to make a real difference. For the holes this time, I'm using an actual drill bit that's meant to drill holes, not the flat end mill that I used last time. This bit works much faster and takes less pressure to make each hole, and it doesn't seem to smoke quite as much. My next step is to add some numbers. The toolpath and bit choice did not work well for this one. The numbers are difficult to see and not cut in very deep, so a little sanding makes them even more difficult to see. I still haven't really found the right toolpath and bit combo to cut decent looking numbers, but I'll continue to work on that. If anyone has any advice on how to carve small, legible numbers on a CNC machine, please feel free to comment below. This one's all ready to cut out. But unlike the last one, I'm going to do the cutout with the CNC rather than the crosscut sled. Mostly because I wanted to round the corners of the board. And after cutting it out, I decided to give the top edge a little round over with the router. I could probably do this step on the CNC as well, but it may just be quicker to use the router for this small step. Now for a little more cleanup. I used a flap wheel to remove any rough spots and then went over it with a mini brush scouring pad to try to get all the little burrs out of there. I also sanded the top surface a bit to get it ready for finishing. And for finishing, I'm using the same stuff that I used on the puzzle easel. It's a two-in-one, so it's one less step to get it finished. I think the second one is definitely an improvement over the first. And I have most of the tool paths figured out, other than the numbers. While trying to get the numbers right, I attempted a few more boards, and still haven't got it quite 100% perfect. But I'll keep working on it. And in the meantime, I've made several boards that I think look pretty good. I ended up trying a few different finishes on the boards. There was of course the combination stain and polyurethane. I did two with that finish. But for one of them, my wife tried her hand at painting some of the eagle. I think she did a great job, and this has become one of my favorites. On another, I used only paste wax, the same stuff I put on the bottom of the crosscut sled. And finally, I tried some Danish oil as well. Some of these also have a little wipe on poly added to increase the protection a little more. I'm curious what you all think about these different finishes. Do you have a favorite? Let me know in the comments below. And no crib board is complete without some pegs. And this, to me, is one of the coolest things about the Snapmaker. I can carve an eagle into a chunk of wood and then switch over to the 3D printer and make some pegs for the boards. I really only needed one of these grip boards for myself, so I'm going to hang on to one of them. But the rest, I'm going to put up on the Etsy shop. If you'd like one for your very own, then I'll provide a link in the description for you. If you're not familiar with the machine I'm using for this project, click here to learn more about the Snapmaker. Mm -hmm.